uh, verses uh, 41 to down to the end of the chapter this morning. And uh, I just want to start by uh, saying that, you know, I am, I am so thankful uh, to be saved today. Amen. I am so thankful uh, to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have no regrets at all. And um, so now I'm thankful for that. And uh, these, uh, John and uh, Alexa, are going to follow the Lord in believers' baptism. And, um, and y'all have it. I'll just say they, they have it easy. I got, I got baptized. Mom would testify to this. I got baptized in a horse trough. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it wasn't a heated horse trough. Amen. It was cold. And, uh, but hey, I was a kid, so I was resilient. Amen. So these guys, you guys have it easy. All right. Nice, nice good, warm, uh, heated water. And uh, so... But I, I don't regret that. I don't regret anything that I've done for the Lord. I only wish I'd done more. Amen. And um, then, you know, I'm also glad uh, to be a part of a local New Testament Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that um, for these many years since I've been saved and followed in baptism to be a part of a local church. I don't know what I would, where I would be today without the local church. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for the fellowship that I've needed. I'm so thankful for the preaching that I've received, the teaching that I've received. And uh, I just, I love the church. And by the way, if you love the Lord, how do you not love the church? Amen. Amen. I don't understand these people. I really don't. Uh, who say they, they, they love the Lord, but they don't love the church. It just makes sense to me. If you love Jesus, you're going to love what Jesus loves. Amen. Amen. The Bible says he loved the church and gave himself for it. I, I love the church. I love Sundays. I love Wednesdays. I, I love uh, every time that we get together. I, I look forward to it uh, very, very much. I just love uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ and look forward to it every single week. I love it. And um, by the way, I also say that, you know, the church is the bride of Christ. You know, how can you say you love the Lord? You know, if you said to me, well, pastor, we love you, but boy, we sure hate Nikki. Mm. That wouldn't make sense, would it? If, if you love me, you love my bride. Amen. I don't know how, I don't know how uh, bold I am, but I tell you what, you start being mean to her, you find someone that gets, gets some boldness about him. Amen. You may have some things explained to you you wish you wouldn't have explained to you. Amen. That's my bride. Amen. That's my bride. And you know, the Lord loves his bride. And I'm thankful for that this morning. I, I love, I love the local church. And, uh, you know, this is the church age, is it not? The Bible speaks of that. And uh, began when Christ came into the world and was and established the New Testament church. Now, I would say churches are not buildings. It's no. not. No. Uh, if something happened to this building, God forbid. But if something happened to this building, the church would still go on. It would. It's, uh, I'm looking at the church. All right. We're, we're, we're the church. All right? We understand that. All right. Uh, the New Testament church has no walls. Yes, there's a place to, uh, to gather for worship. Uh, and prayer, God's house, as we call it a house of prayer, a place where we worship. Uh, but the church cannot be limited to what goes on inside the four walls of the church. It cannot. I'm glad that our church today is in Mexico. And our church today is all around the world. And uh, as, as our missionaries preached the glorious gospel. And yesterday we went out into our community and preached the gospel. Gave door hangers, door to door. And uh, it goes beyond uh, the inside of a building. But I love the church. The church is a group of believers, baptized believers, that have voluntarily joined themselves together to carry out the Great Commission. That is to see people saved, see people follow in baptism, and to see people taught the truths of the Word of God. Let me remind us this morning that the church has only one head, and his name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. He is the head of the church, so I'm thankful for that. And we are bound together by our love for the Lord and our love for one Another, and I'm thankful for that. The body of believers adheres to a body of doctrine. We'll talk about that this morning. Agreed upon and founded in the Word of God. Yeah. All right, you're in a Baptist church this morning, and uh, one of the things that Baptists stand for, and really pretty much maybe the most important thing, is we believe this book is the Word of God. Yeah. This is the manual, this is yeah. what we go by. All right. In other words, a man says something, and this word says something, we go by this every single time. The Bible is the sole authority for faith and practice. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that this morning. And I'm glad I have a copy of God's uh, word this morning. Amen. Which to go by. Amen. The perfect 
perfect, pure, preserved word of God. Well, in Acts chapter number two, if you want to look here this morning, we find that the apostle Peter had been preaching the word of God. He was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. He preached on the day of Pentecost and God blessed mightily. 3,000. Can you imagine that? Boy, that, I, I, I thought about that. Lord, Lord, that'd be great. Hey, Lord, wouldn't that be doing just because, I mean, it's, it's hard not to be proudful when two or three people get saved. Yeah, two or three people saved today, man. But can you imagine the, the pride you'd have to deal with if you had 3,000 saved? And uh, oh, 3,000 people got saved. And listen, people are, were convicted of their sin. Yep. By the way, you don't hear much preaching against sin today in churches. Well, how, how is somebody going to be saved if they don't hear preaching against sin? Right. Right. I mean, what are you, what are you saved from? The Bible says that God shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. I'm glad I've been saved from my sin. Amen. I'm a wicked, filthy, rotten sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen. And if you're saved this morning, you're a filthy, rotten, wicked sinner yeah. saved by the grace of God. I'm glad for that. Amen. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I'm glad for that. One of my favorite hymns is, is that hymn, Grace Greater than all of our sin. I, I agree with the hymn writer that we sang about this morning. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Boasting excluded pride I base. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. And when the word of God was preached. And by the way, when you, I love the book of Acts. It's one of my 66 favorite books in all the Bible. Amen. Yeah. And uh, I love the book of Acts. And the book of Acts, listen, is the blueprint for the church. It is the blueprint for the church. You say, preacher, how, how do we know how, how a church should be? We read the book of Acts. Right. All right, it's the blueprint. All right, by the way, we don't need to try to be a 21st century church. We need to try to be a 1st century yeah. church. Amen? Amen? We have churches today there, and uh, pardon me while I chase, uh, get on my soapbox a second. They're more interested in programs. And they're more uh, interested in pageants. And they're more interested in plays than the power and the preaching of the word of God. Yeah. And uh, God help us, we need to get back to old fashioned Bible preaching in our churches. Preaching against sin, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need to get back to. And that's what was happening here in the book of Acts. There was the preaching of the word of God. And guess what happens when the preaching of the word of God happens? People got convicted of their sin. And they were getting saved. And let's pick it up there this morning. Acts chapter 2 and beginning in verse number 41. The Bible says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods. And parted them to all men as every man had need. Let me just stop right here. It has absolutely zero to do with the message. But friend, this is not communism. This is Christianity. Right. They were not forced to sell and give to others by a government edict. They did it out of a love for their hearts. All right, people say, we have a reason I say that. If people bring up those verses, well, you know, it's, you know everybody needs to, to make the same amount of money and, and, and all this and that. Uh, no, that's not in the Bible, all right? Mm -hmm. Verse 46, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And I, I praise the Lord for this good church here, don't you? And uh, by the way, let me just give you a couple of things by way of introduction uh, further. That I believe that the real measure of a church, it ought to be in its likeness to Jesus Christ. Not in its size. You know, the Bible talks about that. Not in its size, but its sorts. Yeah. Jesus said one day we'll be, uh, we'll be judged by what sort it is. Not by what size. A lot of churches have great size, but they don't have good swords. They're not like the Lord Jesus Christ. And a real measure of a church is in its likeness to Jesus Christ. All right. And so um, this is how God's work is done here in Acts chapter number two. Again, this is the blueprint that he wants for us to do. 
Three, the title of the message this morning is this. Three things that I am certain God wants you to be. Three things that I am certain God wants you to be. And before I give you the first one, you know, people uh, talk about Christians and You'll hear people say something like this. Well, uh, you know, you guys, you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, friend, listen, <laughs> it's not that we can't. We don't want to. Right. Amen. But we don't want to. Chris and, I were, Chris and I were talking last evening, just having a conversation with somebody. Chris said, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm a Christian. I don't, I don't want to, to watch those things on television. Amen. And it's not that we can't. We don't want to. Amen. When I got saved, God changed my water. Amen. I want to please the Lord. All right, but I will also say this, and for everything that we quote unquote can't do, really shouldn't do, you know what? We ought to replace it with something we can do. Amen, and we should do, all right? Uh, it's, uh, listen, I don't curse, but you know what? I use my tongue to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? It, it's, it's an opposite thing, all right? And, 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 and we could go on and on and on and on those things. The three things this morning that God wants us to be. And I hope this morning that you are all three of these things. Number one, notice with me in verse 41, just a simple outline. Notice they believed. They believed. Three things God wants you to be. Listen, he wants you to believe. Verse 41, it says, then they that gladly received his Word. Right, by the way, aren't you glad you received the word of God? Say amen. I am so glad that I have received. I have never regretted receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have never regretted receiving the word of God. You see, these people believed the word of God as it was preached. They believed what the preacher said. The preacher preached against sin. He preached about Christ. He preached about him being the Savior. And they believed those things. It's good uh, that we've had several in our church in, in recent days and weeks uh, believe the gospel and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. You say, what did the Apostle Peter preach, preacher? Well, I believe that he preached that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. Amen. He is the promised Messiah. They were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for Christ to come. And I love that where John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. They were looking for the Messiah. And Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. He came from heaven. He came from heaven. Sinless, born of a virgin. Sinless, spotless, stainless, pure Lamb of God. That's who he is. Amen. And knowing did he come, he died. He died, didn't he? And he died. Who did he die for? He didn't die for his sins. He knew no sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God Amen. in him. Listen, and that's what Peter preached. He preached that Jesus Christ died on an old rugged cross for our sins, my sin, your sin. The full payment of our sin was placed on Jesus Christ. What a thought. We've never, listen, you'll never get your mind around that. Yeah. You'll never get your mind around how that all of sin for all the time was placed on Jesus Christ that day. Why did he do it, preacher? Because he loves you. Amen. And he loves me. All right. He loved me so much that he died for me. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Listen, he came from heaven. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again. Amen. By the way, that's what we're going to picture here in a few moments with, 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 with the baptism. All right. We're going to have two folks that are going to go uh, in the water. They're going to go under the water. They're going to come out of, out of the water, and then they're going to go out of the water. All right, what is that a picture of? That's a picture of Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yeah. And we're going to have just two people say this morning, by that act of obedience, I believe that. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was buried for me. I believe he rose for me. And, 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 and all of that had my name on it, and I identified with that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Again, that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. I was saying, all right, he was not ashamed of us. We ought not be ashamed of him. He died, he was buried, and he arose again. That's what Simon Peter preached. 
He preached that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen? Cannot be, cannot, now listen, as, as good and wonderful as baptism is here this morning, I will not take you to heaven. Say amen right there. I hope you, we'll talk about it this morning, how they joined the church. They, they, they had uh, joined this church. That the Bible says that they were added to the church, verse 47. We're going to talk about that this morning. But being a member of New Testament Baptist Church will not take you to heaven. Say amen right there. Amen. It will not. There's no amount of works that will take you to heaven. Jesus is the only way of salvation. He's the only way to heaven. He's not a way. He's not a good way. He's the way. Amen. And there's no other way except through the Lord. And as Simon Peter preached, the apostle Peter preached about sin and about Christ and about uh, his love and forgiveness of their sin. They were convicted and they were converted. And oh, I hope this morning and pray that if you've never been saved, Today be your day of salvation. Amen. Be a good day to get saved. Amen. Amen. Be a good day for you to, to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And notice it says, verse 41, they received it. And they that received his word. And friend, the greatest thing in all the world is to know that you are saved. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Turn with me, if you would, to Acts chapter number 16. You're in Acts 2. Go over to Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, you find a man preaching, or, or uh, he had been preaching, not Simon Peter. Now we're talking about Paul. Of course, God did a mighty work in his life. He was an awful, wicked Christian, an awful, wicked person. God saved him, washed him, cleansed him, made him a child of God. And he, he was just as zealous for the Lord uh, after he got saved as he was uh, zealous against the Lord before he got saved. And Simon Peter had been preaching the word of God. And because of that, he got thrown into prison. Yeah. And no doubt the Bible says that they were preaching in, uh, in jail. They had been singing. Uh, they weren't uh, uh, down in the dumps at all. They weren't discouraged. They were excited and, and, and preaching and, and, uh, and singing and, and all of those things. What happened? There was an earthquake that happened. An earthquake that happened. And, 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 and such a mighty earthquake that all the jail cell doors are now open. All the prisoners. And, and this story always marvels me because here's this jailer. The earthquake happens. All the jailer, all the people, all the prisoners can go free. The jailer thinks they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. I'm in charge of these people, and the charge of this is my very life. And he was going to, according to the Bible, he was going to take his own life because all the prisoners are now, uh, he thinks they're free. And he's like, well, they're going to kill me anyways. I'm going to go and do it myself. And to his astonishment here in Acts chapter 16, he finds out they're all still there. That always amazed me. Why did all of them stay? I, I, I just happen to think maybe a lot of them got saved. Mm. They were more interested in hearing the preaching of Paul and, and hearing about what the Lord could do in their lives than they were even their own physical freedom. Yeah. They were more interested in eternal freedom than physical freedom. How about that? Mm. We'll pick it up in the story and look at verse 30. He brought them out and <laughs> he said, here's what the jailer says in verse 30. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, how did he know to ask that question? He knew what salvation was about. He had heard, he had heard Paul and, 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 and Silas preaching. He had heard messages of salvation. I, I had no doubt that, that, that Paul just preached right there in that prison. He knew. How, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, don't miss it. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. Aren't you glad we can be saved today? Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved. Yeah. Through faith. Grace is God extending to you and I what we do not deserve. But we believe it by faith. We accept that. We believe it by faith. Grace is saying, I'll save you. I'll forgive you. Faith is saying, Lord, I trust that. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man 
should boast. I'm not, listen, there's nothing you could add to it. It is just receiving what Jesus Christ did for us. If you were to give me a gift, and if it's a true gift, then there'd be nothing that I have to do for it. Or if I were to give you a gift, there'd be nothing you would do for it. All you would have to do is to receive it. Is that right? You just have to receive it, all right? The Bible says, to as many as received him, to them give you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Are you saved today? Do you know for sure? You know what's sad? You walk up to the average person and say this. Are you certain you're an American citizen? Oh, yeah. Certain. Are you certain if you died today, you'd go to heaven? I hope so. Mm -hmm. No, friend, listen. If you were to ask me that question, by, by the way, yeah, I, I'd really have to say it this way. I'm pretty sure I'm an American. Yeah. But I'm dead sure I'm a Christian. Amen. Amen. Uh, Although I was there for both of them, Mom would have testified I was pretty young when the first one came to be about. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all get that joke a little later. Amen. I was pretty young at the time. Right? Now I know I have a birth certificate and all that. You know what? I am more sure of my heavenly citizenship than I am my earthly citizenship. And listen, we ought to be sure. I, not, not a hope so, think so, I'm trying. No, listen, we can be sure. And by the way, not only should we be sure, we should be sharing that message with others. Listen to 1 Peter. I'll read it. You don't need to turn there. Chapter 3 says this. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We ought to know that we're saved. And we ought to be ready to tell others how they can be saved. Amen. It's a no-so thing. Well, I need to move on. Number two. So number one. Number one, three things um, every, God wants everybody to be. Number one, believe. Number two, look at Acts chapter two and verse 41 again. Number two, not only did they believe, they belonged. Verse 41 says, and they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They were Baptize, the Bible says here in verse 41. Again, a baptism identifies you with the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I want to say it emphatically, it does not add to your salvation. But you identify with Jesus Christ. But it also identifies you with a particular church. That, that was established, this particular church was established in Jerusalem. Now, let me ask you a question. If you have believed, since you have believed, have you have you followed the Lord in that believer's baptism since you say it, since you're saved? Now, three characteristics, and, and John and I uh, talked about this in my office a few uh, days ago. Three things that have to be true for it to be biblical baptism. Number one, you have to have the right candidate. Yeah. You have to be saved. You had to be saved. And, and uh, John and I spoke, and, and uh, John gave me his testimony, how he gave his heart to Christ. All right? The right candidate. Alexa, a few weeks ago at church, gave her heart to Jesus Christ. She was saved. Now she's a candidate for baptism. You're not saved. Uh, you're, not a, you're not a candidate. All right? You have to have the right candidate. Number two, you have to have the right mode. Yep. Immersion. All right? There's not one verse in your Bible that speaks of sprinkling, there's not one verse in your Bible that speaks of infant, quote-unquote, baptism. Right. Not one. There's no verses that speak of pouring. Every single verse in your Bible speaks of immersion. Yep. Immersion. The Bible says they went down into the water. They came up out of the water. The word baptism is just transliterated from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse. All right? Here it is. And by the way, you know, yesterday we, we took the time to, uh, 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 we took time this week and uh, Sister Donna helped us out on that uh, to clean this, uh, to get it ready, to, to fill it, and, uh, to heat it, and uh, all those things. And, uh, and you came back, Brother Rick was here yesterday afternoon and came back in yesterday afternoon, and didn't drop that much. And after the, I got up off the floor and had my heart attack, I, no, I, I filled it back up, prayed all night, Lord, let her be full this morning, let her be full this morning. And I thought I'd fixed it and jiggled the handle there a little bit. Came in early this morning about 6.30. And, 
you know the, the, the suspense, right? I look in there, whew, still full, and it's warm. It's nice, nice and warm. Now listen, it'd be a whole lot easier to do this. And that easier? A whole lot easier than what we went through this week. But it's not right. right. Amen? It's not right. One of these days, I'd like to lead our church in the uh, jack and jack and that up. We want to lift, lift that baptistry up out of there. We want to put a nice choir loft. Y'all start, y'all start envisioning that. Amen. Nice choir loft in front of here, new carpet and, and our chairs here, and uh, I've got it all in my mind. All right. And uh, if y'all have thirty or forty thousand dollars laying around, see me after church. But anyways, all right. We're going to do all that. Now, now, why go through all that? Because it's right. Because it's right. The right mode in the water, under the water, out of the water. Number three, for baptism to be right, you have to have the right authority. The local church. The local church. Baptism is an ordinance of the local church. God gave that commission. There's two ordinances. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Those were given to the local church. So important. So vitally important, all right? And uh, that it's done through the local church. You don't go home and jump in your swimming pool and, and uh, do that. It's through the local church. Now, baptism, and I love that. It's in our prayer letter you read this morning. Little Leora, king, five years old. Why do you want to get baptized? Because it's the first step of obedience for the child of God. Yep. You know what I say? Her parents are teaching her right. Amen. It's exactly right. It's a step of obedience, first step of obedience for the child of God. You find they were saved and they were baptized. Appreciate John being here today. John, looking for a church where you can follow the Lord in believers' baptism. All right? They believed, they were baptized. And then they identified with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the local church. All right? How important all of uh, this is. Turn with me, if you would, uh, real quickly. Um, trying, to, trying to find some jumping off place. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9 real quick. Acts chapter 9. I do want you to see this. I'm Bobby Longby. All right? They were saved. They were baptized. And then they were added to the church. This same church, now we're in Acts chapter number nine, this church at Jerusalem. All right, so of all, of all the thousands and thousands of people in Jerusalem, there was a group of believers, baptized believers, who have voluntarily joined themselves together to carry out the Great Commission. Now a man by the name of Saul gets saved. He puts his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He went, he went from the persecutor of Jesus to a preacher of Jesus. Amen. In Acts chapter number 9, verses 26 and 7, it says in Acts 9, 26, And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed, notice this next phrase, to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him unto the apostles and declared unto them how they had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And I believe once you're saved and baptized, you ought to join yourself to a local church. All right? We need that accountability. I need to be accountable to you. You need to be accountable to, uh, uh, to me and to others. We are accountable to one another. They believed and they belong. All right. Number three, we need to we need to be done here this morning and look at a third and quick thought about three things God wants you to be. Number one, right, believe. Have you believed? God wants you to believe. Number two, they belonged. Have you belonged? Have you followed a believer's baptism since you've been saved? Are you a part of this local church? All right. And if not, God wants you to be. Number three, in, in this thought thing that God wants you to be, number three, they behave. They behave. They behave a certain way. You say, well, preacher, did they, did they take a poll and say, hey, what do you want to believe? Mm. Well, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? Well, I, I, I got to think. No. Look at verse 41. I love the wording here. Then they that gladly received his word, that's one, were baptized too. The same day were added unto them, that's three, about 3,000 souls. Now you say, well, preacher, I, hey, I, I'm saved. Hey, preacher, I followed in baptism. Hey, I, I, I'm a member of this church. I'm done. <laughs> Look at verse 42. I wonder if this could be said of you. And they continued steadfast.
steadfastly yep. in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. You know what's sad? Not the world. I'm talking about people who say they're saved. Live like this is all there is. This world. Live like all there is. But friend, if, if there's a real heaven and a real hell, it ought to affect how we live. Amen? Amen? If there is. If, if, if there isn't, then go about your business. But friend, there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And friend, our behavior is affected by our belief. Truth is, don't, don't tell me what you believe. Show me what you believe. Really, you know, talk is cheap. We all, we all can say what we believe, but we really show what we believe by our lives, all right? And uh, so many people who uh, call themselves Christians, but uh, that belief does not change their behavior. That's not Bible Christianity. Friend, listen, they didn't just say what they believe. They showed what they believe. They put their lives on the line. That they were saying, listen, this is not just intellectual belief. This is what we believe. The Bible says in verse 42 that they continued steadfastly. Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, which, by the way, they got from Jesus, which is Bible doctrine. Amen. It is. All right? And uh, listen, friend, we ought to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the word of God. And you see, so once I'm saved, and then I'm baptized, and then I realize that the means, the means that God uses today to get his work done is the local church. You cannot read this book and come to any other conclusion. The means that God uses, uh, that his vehicle to get his work done today is the local church. It is. Amen. Then you're a part of that, but hang on a second. What are we as a group of believers baptized uh, members of this church, what are we to do? Continue steadfastly in the book. Amen? That means, you know what? That I'm never done. I'm to find out what the book says and do it. And find out what the book says and do it. And find out what the book says and do it and do it and do it and find something else. And you know what? As you grow in the Lord, as, 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 as John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. And you know what? When you love the Lord more and more and more and more and more, you know what happens? Lesser things get crowded out. They do. Things that were once important aren't important anymore. You know why? Because he's most important. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's a wonderful thing. All right? And again, it comes back to that replacement that I was talking about. All right? You, know, you Christians can't do anything. No, we can do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Amen? There's been a great change since I've been born again. Amen. And we replace those things. He must increase and I must decrease. And so this morning, these three things, I wonder if they can be said of you. Have you believed? Have you believed? Have you belonged? And are you behaving according to Word of God. Let me ask you, when was the last time you're a child of God and God spoke to your heart out of this book? Amen. You know what's sad? Maybe someone here this morning you say it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. You know why for some of you it's been a long time? Can I tell you? I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to help you. Somewhere along the line you told God no. God showed you something from this book. Now listen, if, if God didn't speak to your heart last week in devotions, and if it's been a while, if you've been, if you've been in church the last few weeks, and God hasn't spoken to your heart, you ought to get real concerned. Mm. Or, if, I go, if I go a few days and God hasn't spoken to my heart in devotions or uh, through preaching preparation or hearing preaching and all those things, if it's been a while, I get real nervous. You know what I have to do? Get in that prayer closet and say, God, what is it? Amen. Lord, what is it? Show me. Show me, Lord, what it is. Lord, what is it that you're trying to speak to my heart about? What is it that I, uh, what area am I not obeying you? And listen, you know, the Bible says, that, I'm going to misquote it, where the Bible says that when our, when our eye gets single, our whole body becomes full of light. Think of that. 
When your eye becomes single. Now here's the thing. Because our eye can become double and triple. We're looking at this oh, and we're yeah. part of that. And we're all focused on all this and this and this. But when I get focused on him. It's like wow. I like your whole body's flooded with light. What a, what a, and, and, and by the way. And you know what that means. You said yeah that's what it's, what it's like. Yeah. Floods our whole body with light. Yeah. He says light on all sorts of subjects. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. See where our focus ought to be. He must increase. Let's bow our heads for prayer this morning. Our heads bowed and our eyes are closed. And those who are going to be baptized this morning can go ahead and make their way to the changing rooms and be ready to be baptized if you folks would. But our heads bowed and our eyes are closed this morning. I want to ask you a question. Will you be these three things?